Anybody remember? We did it in that uh, reactor bats that Davey did in Code Pen. Yeah. We do set it up in the constructor. So let's go ahead and put a constructor in here. And as a general rule, I don't think article is actually getting any props at the moment, but you typically want your constructor to accept props and then also pass them on when you call super, so that way um, you make sure that if it does receive props in the future or if your article is receiving props that they get instantiated correctly. In this case, it wouldn't operate any differently if we didn't pass it. And then we set up our state object. And what should we call the property? It's just whether or not we show comments, right? So we can just make it show comments. Do you think that should be true or false initially? False. false. Good choice. I mean, you could show comments, but probably don't care initially unless I click that button. All right. So we got some initial state set up. How are we going to go about changing that? Like if I was just looking at this page, what would I do to try and change that? Click on comments, right? So we need something to happen when we click on this A tag that uh, has the comments, right? So we can just do on click. And let's call it this dot toggle comments. Meaning, we're also going to need to make a method toggle comments. Does toggle comments get any arguments? The event, right, it's an event handler because it's called on click. So right now, let's see if that works. So it looked like it did, kind of. We got bumped to the top of the page did manage to do that. I may know what just happened. What's the normal behavior of clicking on an A tag? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, A tags take you somewhere, right? They're links to other locations. And right now our href is just the pound sign, which just takes us to the top of the page. So we don't really want that to happen. So we probably just need to prevent default first. So now we should be able to click it and not have that problem. Good. Now it just doesn't do anything. So what do we actually want to have happen? What are we wanting to change when we click that? Can you like render the super to use this option? Yeah, totally. But how are we going to know whether to render it or not? What do we have to change first? Yeah, so we want that to be true, right? We do want to show the comments. So. We use set state. Remember, we don't change state directly. And in our new state, so set state, the first argument is just the object that's going to replace your current state. We want show comments to be what? True, or in this case, we're toggling it. So, yeah, the opposite of whatever it is. So not this dot state that show comments. 
Make sense? So if it's true, then it's going to be false. So it's false, it's going to be true. Now, what do you expect to happen if I now console log the event? What's going to show the first time that I do that? Or not the event, I'm sorry. This dot state. What's the value of show comments going to be? after the first time I click it. True, right? Maybe. Let's find out. Oh, what's that? Oh. Cannot read property set state of null. What's that mean? Correct. This is not what it should be. And why is that? Hmm? Because I get called in an event handler, right? So this is not our component. So we need to bind to this, right? So remember, there were a few ways we saw yesterday to do that. Uh, we're just going to do the way we do it in the constructor. Because it's probably the most common way you'll see it out there. We're going to learn another way that's easier that I think will be more common going forward, but most React code that's out there right now probably does it this way. So we'll get used to this way as well. So just when you run the constructor, go ahead and bind to that. All right, now let's try doing that again. And we got it. Except, what's show comments? What's it supposed to be? Right. So this is something that really tripped me up when I first started doing React until I finally figured out what the problem was. Is anybody familiar with doing things asynchronously in JavaScript? No, probably not. Yeah. You. Kind of. Yeah. Um, so. Synchronously means that you're literally just running top to bottom. So like ev.prevent default runs, and then this.set state runs, and then console.log runs, and you wait for the preceding line to be done before you go to the next one, which is the way a lot of things work. The reason a lot of things in JavaScript did not work that way is since the JavaScript's in the browser, and so you have to make a lot of like data calls to external APIs, things like that. So let's say part of my app is running and I need to make an API call to GitHub's API because I need to get somebody's username. If we do that synchronously, my program stops until the GitHub API recognizes my request and then sends back the data I want. So like from the user's perspective, it would just become completely unresponsive until we got that information back. And if you have a bad data connection or GitHub is down or something, you could be stuck there for a long, long time before it finally times out. So a lot of things in JavaScript are asynchronous, meaning it'll run that API call. It'll say, hey, GitHub, give me this information. I'm going to keep doing my thing over here. Just get back to me when you can. So the problem is if the next line is something that relies on the information I need back from GitHub, it's, I'm not going to have it yet. So my code is still running synchronously, but I'm waiting on an async response. So even though it doesn't necessarily look like it, set state is an asynchronous thing. So it is not in any way guaranteed to happen right away. I mean, from our perspective, it's very, very fast. But from a computer's perspective, it's not immediate. So it is not waiting for state to get updated before you hit this console log so the state that we're console logging is correct. It just hasn't been updated yet. So if you want it to, to see what the updated version is, set state can actually take a couple arguments. The first one is the object that you're setting state to. The second argument is anything that you want to run after it's actually updated. So we can just give it an anonymous arrow function and put our console log in here. get rid of this one. 
So now it is going to call set state. First argument is this object. Second argument is the function that's going to run after it's actually done the update. So now should get the expected value, which is true. So when I first started doing React, I was like, why is half the time my result wrong? I don't get it. <laughs> and even though the app would like work okay, because like by the time you actually need to do anything with it in the UI, it's fine. But it always looked like when I console logged it to make sure it was working okay, that it was the wrong value. And that's why, because it's asynchronous. So if you want to see the updated version, just make sure you're doing it as a callback function to set state, not outside of it. Does that kind of make sense? Cool. All right, so now we know that button works correctly. It's toggling the value. So now that show comments will be set to true after we click it the first time, we need to now show a comment box, right? So how did you go about doing that? Okay, so you just use basically like an if statement? Yeah. So remember that React is just a library on top of JavaScript, so you can use normal JavaScript stuff to like conditionally do things or all sorts of stuff. So if we want to conditionally show something based on a property, we can use if else. Uh, is anybody familiar with the ternary operator? I know quite a few languages have that. Uh, it's kind of like a shorthand way to do if else. I'll just show you that real quick. So we want our comments to show up below this, the two article links, right? So we're just going to put it in right below that. So a ternary is basically like if you give it a condition as the first thing. So if that's true, then it's going to run the next thing that comes after the question mark. So it's like you're asking it a question. Is this that state that show comments true? Cool. Then give me this. Otherwise, so now the colon separates. This is what it's going to run if it's true. And then the next thing is what's going to run if it's false. What do we want to render if it's not true? Nothing, right? Null. Let's see what happens. Ta da! Pretty sweet, right? That was easy to do. Didn't have to do a single document.query selector at all. All right. So we don't want to really just want to do a div. We go ahead and make another component for that. Let's just call it comments. And add a new file, comments.js. that for now. Uh, let's see, what am I missing? Oh, I didn't import it over here. All right. So that should work, right? We're calling if this dot state does show comments is true, we're going to render our comments component, which we are now importing. We defined it over here. It should currently render just a div that says comments. Let's see if that works. 
Sure does. All right. But we don't want it to just be a div. We would like it to actually be a text box, right? Let's go ahead and change that. Even better, we could have, let's put a div first. Because remember, everything has to be wrapped in a single element. And then we can put a text area in here. Now, there we go. Got a text area. Sweet. Nothing really. I can't submit it. What else do we need? A button would be totally awesome. And let's do. Let's have it say submit comment. <coughs> and let's just, we haven't styled it yet, but let's just give it a class name because it doesn't look super great right now, so we'll probably want to style it later. And we are using foundation, so let's make that button look like a button. There we go. Now I can typey, typey, typey. And I have a button that doesn't do anything. But we're making progress. It's probably a good time for a commit before we get too much further into this. Now we'll push that up. All right, so next question. Does our comments component need any state? Like, is there anything we need to keep track of? See some nodding. What do you think we need to keep track of? What they write in the comment box. Let's start with that. So if we're going to set up state here, we need to do that in the constructor, right? Don't forget your call to super. And let's set up this.state. And you said we want to keep track of what's in the comment box, right? So when we first initialize the component, what do we want in the comment box? Like when we're just showing it for the first time, what should it show in there? Nothing, Nothing right? Empty string. And then, how do we tie that value to the text area? So we need to somehow get this to show whatever's there and stay in sync with it. So one way we saw yesterday that Davey did through a reference, right? He's put a reference on the input. There's another way to do it. You can literally just say value equals this.state.comment. Just tell React what you want the value to be. And just to be nice to our customers, let's also put a placeholder in. And we'll just say Enter comment here. So we got that. When we load up for the first time, the constructor should run. It's going to set state. And our initial comment will just be an empty string, meaning if it's empty, which we bound that value here, we should see the placeholder that says enter comment here, right? Probably. Oh, we sure do. Look at that. 
Why is it broke? I can't enter anything anymore. It sure is. So we set state to be an empty string. And so it doesn't care what I'm pushing. It's just an empty string. So what do we need to have happen if that's the case? You can't just leave comment equal to an empty string, right? You need to change what that value is. Hmm. So we've seen on click, we've seen, I don't know, some other events. There's also an on change event. So we can have that call something like update comment. Let's not forget to bind our method either. So that way we get the right this. Cool. So let's see what we're actually getting in here when we run this update comment function. So again, it sees it, that I'm putting something in. You can see the values that I'm putting in, but we're not actually changing state yet, so it just gets immediately reverted back to the empty string. So, we need to actually update the comment, right? Would probably be a good idea. So how am I going to update state? What's the method we run when we want to change state? Clap because you got it. You know what method to run? You know what method to run to change state? We don't change state directly, right? We don't say this dot state equals. What do we run when we want to change state? Yeah, this dot set state. And rather than being a blank string, what do I want the value to be? The event was the change, right? I can just be the value of that. And then, just to make sure that's going to work, let's go ahead and run the anonymous function so we can see what this dot state is after we do the change. Hooray! Look at that. I can type again, and you can see that our comment is getting updated every time that we run that update comment function. Sweet. Commit that real quick. All right, so that handles making sure that our comment in state is always up to date with the value in the box. What do we want to have happen when we actually submit the comment? I 
thing about Mega Roster, what happened when we clicked the button to submit a student? Where did that student go? Local storage, but more immediately into the list, right? We had an array of students. So on state, we could have an array of comments. And when it first loads, what comments should be in there? None, right? Empty array. Works for me. So if we want something to happen when this button is clicked, well, what do we need to put on here? An on-click event handler, yep. And let's run a function called add comment, or this dot add comment. Go ahead and bind this on there. All right. So, we already got comment in state, and it's going to be updated to whatever value they've put in the box, right? Because we're updating that every time something new gets entered or changed. So, when we run add comment, really all I want to do is take whatever the value of comment is and shove it into the array, right? Make sense? So first thing I want to do, since this is going to be a more complicated transition, is let's just make a copy of state that we can work on. So let's do, remember about the destructuring assignment from yesterday? So basically what this is saying is I'm making a local variable, a variable that's just local to my add comment called state equal to an object where I'm taking all the properties of this dot state, so a comment in our comments array, and just copying them over to this new object. So now I've got a copy of state that's just local, so I can modify it and do whatever I want without affecting the component as a whole. Make sense? So think about when you comment on the real internet, is it just the text of your comment or what shows up? Or you have no opinion, so you've never tried. Never seen a comment before. <laughs> yeah, good. So username is something that could show up. Do we have users in our app? We don't. Do we have time? Time does exist, mostly. <laughs> so yeah. We could have the text of the comment. We could also set the time, a timestamp, basically, of when that comment was submitted. So if we want to you know, store multiple things about a comment, then what sort of data structure do we need? <laughs> objects, yes. Everything in JavaScript's objects. So we can make a comment object where the text is equal to what? We already have it, right? Where's our comment text stored right now? Yep. Easy enough. And then time. You've probably not seen this yet, but you can just do JavaScript has a built-in date. So you can just say new date. And then we want to actually put this new comment object into this array. So, or not this dot state. Remember, we're modifying our copy. So we can just say state dot comments dot push comment. And then we're going to set the actual state with the new state. Make sense? So we made a copy of state. 
We made a comment object. We push that comment object onto our copy of state and then set state of the actual component to our new state. Sweet. There's one other thing that would probably be a little nice to do when we do this, which is go ahead and clear out the comment box, right? So that's pretty easy to do. All we have to do, since our box is bound to the value of this.state.comment, we just set it back to an empty string. So now, let's see what happens. So after that actually gets set, let's see what this.state is. All right, so you can see this cleared out because comment got set back to an empty string. We have an item in our comments array. It is an object. And it has our text and our timestamp. Sweet. So what's the last step we need to do? We entered a comment, but where is it? In magic state land. We should probably show it, right? That'd be a good idea. So I've done this a couple times now. Nothing fancy to it. We just need to map over our state.comments, right? And just render a comment for each one. Uh, let's see here. Let's do. Let's do another div. Class name of comment. with a div inside of it. And we'll just put the comment.txt in there. Think it'll work? Take a vote. <laughs> oh, man. Now you'll notice we still got our, hey, you should really have a key prop on that. But it did not work. That's the important part. All right. So that's cool. Let's make another functional stateless component or stateless functional component, however you want to say it. Uh, comment. Accept some props. Returns some stuff. Take that out of here, put it in here. This is now going to be props.comment.txt, right? Erase all of this stuff, because now we can use our comment thing. And what do we need to pass into the comment? The comment. I put a comment in your comment. It's a lot of comments. And then we also need that key prop, which we will just pass in as the second argument that we received from map. Need some parentheses now. Let's see. Still works. Warning went away. Excellent. Probably don't need to console log anymore. You can get rid of that. All right. Any questions about any of that? 
super clear. You're ready to write your own blog now in React. Awesome. One last thing I want to do real quick, and I want to get you guys on your break. Let's make it a little bit prettier. Add some CSS to it. Because let's be honest, that blue button does not look great with all our gold bling on this page. All right, so first problem, that's way too close to that. It'd be nice if we had some margin in between our buttons and our text field, right? Other problem, that button should be gold like everything else on this awesome page. Also, our comments rendering, it just looks like a bunch of text. It'd be nice if there was some sort of visual separation. So that's basically what we're doing. We're adding some margin top to the comments div. For our button, we're making it light gold, a little bit darker gold when we hover over it. For the comment itself, we're giving it some padding so it's not against the very edge of the div, giving it some border so there's some separation. Um, this one I don't think we've used before, this pseudo selector first of type. So we use first child, right? Why is first child not going to work in this case? What's the first child of our comments div? The text area, the text area right? So I'm wanting to style the comments. The comment is never the first child of this div, so that doesn't work. But we can use first of type. It's the first div child of that div, so that'll work. So basically just making the top radius, radius of the border a little bit curved so it's not just a square. Same thing with the last child, giving the bottom two corners a little bit of a curve. And then, this is another fun one, the nth child just lets you select a particular child, and you can also pass it either even or odd. So making that background a slightly different color, so you kind of get that effect where each su successive one is a slightly different color. Let's import this style sheet and see what happens. Oh, that looks nicer. Hooray. Nice. Oh, slightly lighter color. Can you see that on that screen? Trust me, it's slightly lighter. All right. That looks way better. You did it. Super mega bonus credit, hyper fighting. Any questions about that? Awesome. 10 minute break. And let's get back for some more new stuff. I will uh, save this and push it up.